Hey guys, welcome back to Explore Electronics. So in this video, let's understand biasing in mass amplifier circuits, that is MOSFET biasing, using the two biasing methods, fixing VG and fixing VGS with RS. So biasing of MOSFET by fixing the gate voltage has two methods. In that first one is biasing using fixing VGS. Here, as the name itself says, we need to fix the voltage between gate and source of the MOSFET. This is the circuit diagram you can see. Here is the MOSFET. This is drain, source and gate terminal. The basic idea of MOSFET biasing is that we need to keep the MOSFET in saturation region. When we keep this in the saturation region, the MOSFET will work as an amplifier. So in the saturation region, as we know, ID is constant and that ID will be dependent on the gate to source voltage. And here is the arrangement for the biasing you can see for fixing VGS. How we can fix VGS means using a voltage divider circuit to the gate of the transistor to keep the gate voltage constant. Since source will be connected to, uh, connected to ground, whatever the gate voltage we are going to provide, that will be the gate to source voltage. So we are using R1 and R2 here. We need to use R1 and R2 carefully so that we will be getting the uh, required VG which will be generated from VDD. So here fixing the gate to source voltage to a value required to provide desired drain current. It means the drain current ID in the saturation region will be fixed using a constant VGS. If constant VGS, ID is constant. And now if you write the expression for the gate voltage, it is Vg is equal to Vdd into R2 divided by R1 plus R2. Here R2 divided by R1 plus R2, why? Because this gate voltage in the sense, it is the voltage across R2 only. And Vg is fixed, Vgs is also fixed, so it is same. Now with this method, the current flowing through the transistor, if you see, Id is equal to 1 by 2 mu n COX into W by L into VGS minus VT whole square. This is the drain current expression in the saturation region. If you look at this expression, you can easily see the ID depends on mu n into COX. Mu n is the mobility of electrons since it is a n type MOSFET and COX is the oxide capacitance and W by L is the transistor ratio, the width and length of the channel and VGS is the gate to source voltage we are fixing now minus VT, VT is the threshold voltage of the transistor. Means if any of these parameter varies, ID varies. But we need to keep ID constant and mu n, COX, W by L, VT are always constant but they may vary with respect to other parameters like if temperature varies, mu n, COX varies. If temperature varies, VT also varies. So in this method what happens? The dependent of ID on VGS in saturation region. If we need to keep VGS is constant, ID is constant. But because of the temperature variation, this mu n and VT may vary. That leads to a large variation in ID. But since VGS is constant, still ID is varying. That is the problem with respect to this method. You can see here in the ID versus VGS curve also. Uh, in X axis, I have taken VGS. In y-axis, we have taken ID. This capital V, capital G, S yes, corresponds to the gate to source biasing voltage what we are fixing now. This small V, G, S corresponds to the variation in the total VGS with respect to the amplifier um, voltage parameter. So when VGS is constant, because of the two different temperatures of device 1 and device 2, you can see the large variation in ID1 and ID2. We can't keep the ID constant in a amplifier circuit. This is the disadvantage of this fixing the gate voltage. This leads to variation in IDs. To avoid that, we can fix this using a simple resistor to put in the source of the transistor. That is the second method, biasing using fixed VG and a source resistance. The circuit if you compare with the previous one, it is same. There is an added source resistance here, this RS. This method is a biasing of MOSFET using fixed VG. It is not fixed VGS, it is just fixed VG. And VGS is not constant here. 
and source resistance is added in this technique used in discrete MOSFET circuits involved fixed DC voltage to the gate VG connecting a resistance as I said. This technique will reduce the variability in ID. The previous problem we saw in fixed VGS will be reduced here. And here is the resistance RS, it will be act as a negative feedback which stabilizes the biasing of the device, means it will stabilize ID. So let us understand this clearly using an expression for VG. VG can be written as VGS plus RS into ID here. So VG is the gate voltage that equal to VGS plus RS ID. If you look at this expression, here VG is constant and we are expecting this ID is constant and RS is constant. VGS is variable, VGS is not constant here. So suppose if in the same case as we look at the previous method, if ID increases for any reason, means any reason means because of the temperature or because of any physical parameter, if ID increases, what happens? If ID increases in this, uh, this expression, because of VG is constant, VGS should decrease since RS is also constant. And remember in the saturation region, ID will be dependent on VGS. Here in because of the variation in temperature, ID increases. In this expression, it will make VGS reduces. VGS will reduce. And because of VGS reduces, ID again will reduce. So, the overall idea of this biasing method is that by putting RS, it will act as a feedback resistor. It gives the negative feedback and it will be called as a degeneration resistance because if ID increases because of any reason, it will bring back the ID to the normal position by allowing VGS to increase or decrease. So here VGS is not fixed, VGS can be varied because of ID increase or decrease because of the physical parameter variation, this VGS is also varies. That makes the flexibility in bringing back the, bringing back the ID to a constant value, making the amplifier more stable. You can see the ID versus VGS curve here also. Here also the two devices in different temperatures with constant W by L, mu N, COX, everything. But because of the temperature, the ID is varying here. And you can see the clear cut difference between the previous case as well as this case. Here VGS is constant. But here VG is constant, VGS is not constant. For the two devices, you can see there is a different VGS according to the variation in the physical parameters. And look at the variation in ID, ID2 and ID1 having less difference, but in the previous case we have large difference in the ID1 and ID2. So this is the advantage of fixed VG and allowing the VGS2 flexible and having a four, uh, constant source resistance. This method can be used in place of fixed VG method. Thank you.